Welcome to another unit in this course on economics. This time I'm going to introduce the basic idea behind the so-called input-output analysis. Here in the first part we basically have the idea that we want to in some kind of model how the different sectors in an economy are actually connected. Which of the sectors send how much of their products to which other sector. And what we have in this table is basically two parts. The first part is the first four columns. That's this part here. And we can get to this result by any of two possible well, approaches. One idea would be we consider a good from sector one and then consider how many inputs from sector one, two and three we need. Once we noted all of this, we then column standardize this. So basically here we calculate the sum for sector one and divide all of these values by the overall sum, giving us here those percentage values, which in the end would end up totaling 100%. So that's basically the intermediate result we need for this input-output analysis. But in the first step, we could list like the requirements for one unit of sector one or for the whole input in sector one. And those sectors actually, or those elements actually report how many units are used from one sector in another one. That's the first part of this table. The second part, not the part back here, tells us how much we want to produce for the final demand. So for basically selling in the market. And once we have the information of this column standardized matrix and we have the final demand, we can actually calculate how much total output of sector one, sector two and sector three we would need to generate this final demand. How are we going to do this? Well, first off, we build a short system of equations, of linear equations, by starting with a unit matrix. So here we have the unit matrix, the identity, with ones on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. And from this, we subtract this matrix here on the left. So we take this matrix. We do not write this as 20%, but for example here as 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Then we multiply this with the supply. That's like the overall supply of each of the sectors. So this means supply of sector one, total supply of sector two, total supply of sector three. And this is equal to the demand or the final demand. So this is equal to the values we set here. Then we simply calculate here this subtraction of the two matrices and we get this intermediate result, this linear system of equations, which we then can solve for the total supply of each of the sectors. So we basically solve this linear system of equations, giving us this output. So to get a final outcome of 100 units and sector one goods, 300 units of sector two goods and 500 units of sector three goods, we would need these overall production values in each of the three sectors. So we need to produce way more than is actually left over via the final demand because we have a lot of inputs to satisfy in each of the different sectors. And well, that's then basically it on this first basic approach on how to actually note relations between different sectors of an economy and how to solve this for getting the total supply necessary 
to satisfy a given demand structure. Well, as I said, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll say goodbye and see you next time.